Greetings, everyone, and thank you for joining us here today for our session on managing the future of in-person market research, presented by CCAM Focus, powered by Civicom and l and &E Research. We're glad you're here today to work with us. So, managing the future of market research in person is taking on a new dimension, and the speakers you're going to hear from today are myself, Rebecca West, President of the Marketing Research Services Group at Civicom, and Brett Watkins, President and CEO of l and &E Research, a multi-location facility chain here in the United States. We're facing a situation where we have what's known to people now as the new normal. Focus group facilities are adapting in the age of social distancing so that they can continue to conduct research with respondents in their locations in person. It's necessary now for people to re-enter facilities with safety and effectiveness front of mind. Things have changed. It's necessary to have uncompromised audio and video quality despite wearing masks or using plexiglass inside the facility. And it's necessary for remote observers to view live focus groups safely from wherever they are located. Civicom has been in business for over 20 years, conducting web-enabled research globally. We conduct approximately 35,000 IDIs and focus groups every year on behalf of our clients, providing the facilitation tool for them to have successful projects. Our cyber facility, IDI and focus groups, is supported by our Glide Central video curation tools, along with our online community platform, Civicom Chatterbox, our CCAM focus and facility platform, our recruiting services, transcriptions, translations, our mobile tools, our front row mobile ethnography, and our See Me Navigate mobile content usability tools. Generally, everything that we need and you need to conduct research is available to you. Brett's going to tell you a little bit about the services and products of l and &E Research. Hi, everyone. Thanks, Rebecca, for the introduction. I'm Brett Watkins, president of l and &E Research. l and &E Research is a qualitative research recruitment company. Uh, our specialty is connecting with our community to connect our clients, uh, to connect our clients with our community, which enables us to give back to our community. Recruitment is the strength of our portfolio, uh, beginning with a panel of over 1 million uh, consumers and medical healthcare professionals. Uh, we also have facility locations in 11 markets throughout the United States, um, consulting services that we can provide in terms of being able to provide turnkey qualitative research solutions, helping clients with everything from project management to um, consult and research design, um, providing streaming tools as well as technologies that you can enable to uh, conduct other elements of qualitative research, uh, which you can find on our website as a host of different partners, including companies like Civicom and project management, a uh, team of over uh, 20 project managers uh, located throughout the country uh, that have uh, considerable decades of experience uh, in research as uh, based on l and background of uh, being in business since 1984. Now at the next slide, obviously gives you a good idea of the uh, nationwide uh, coverage that we have uh, for the United States and all of our different locations. Uh, with uh, quality, high-quality recruitment services in each market location. Rebecca, I'll turn it back over to you. So why are Brett and I here today to talk with you? Uh, we're here because CCAM Focus is a solution that is available in all of these facilities and enables people to conduct their in-facility market research, adapting in the new normal. CCAM is a capability that's located in over 200 locations in the United States, plus over 13 international countries. Our technology can be available in any U.S. facility where it is not already within 24 hours up and running, and internationally within 48 hours. All we have to do is know where it needs to be, and it's available for you to work with, and especially in all of the locations of l and &E. So what is special about CCAM? CCAM's core capabilities include an omnidirectional camera, which gives you a 360 degree panoramic view of the entire room. But at the same time, CCAM Focus captures full face video, emotion, enthusiasm, and engagement is something you're able to discern with CCAM with all of the respondents as they are speaking. 
The active speaker view focuses on the last three speakers so that you are continually seeing a chain stitched together of who has spoken. And this works no matter how far people are away from each other in the room. So I think everybody wants to see what a COVID facility looks like. And so we felt that the most effective method for Melanie Research was to create video content. So uh, the first video we're gonna share today is just a general overview of many of the numerous steps that clients could experience uh, at a new, new normal in terms of in-person research. Let's take a look now at the video that we created, which gives a really good uh, generalization of in-person research in COVID-19 environments. Hello, I'm Brett Watkins, president of LE Research. From all of us at LE, we hope that you and your loved ones are healthy and safe. The COVID 19 pandemic has created an international crisis that has turned our worlds upside down. As governments begin to ease quarantines, researchers are also getting back out there and conducting in person research again. But safety is a critically important issue to you, and it should be. So we wanted to show you how seriously we are taking safety by developing the highest standards for preventing the spread of this virus. We began planning the reopening of our network shortly after governments began issuing quarantines. At the onset, we agreed that our goal was to provide the safest research environments in the United States, establishing the standards others would follow. Task force were created, experts in design planning, sanitation and risk management were consulted, and other office industries were studied to determine what we needed to change. We then laid out a strategy and tested it, Mock studies were conducted to see if our plans would work. Our goal was to learn at every turn how to reduce touching and interaction, but still allow for a rich in-person research experience. We're happy to report that our work has resulted in the safest in-person research experience in the United States. We didn't just meet the Insights Association guidelines, we exceeded them. We call it the hands-free post-COVID facility. Let me take just a brief moment to walk you through what this new research experience will look like for you and your client team. To start, as always at l &E, it begins with excellent recruitment. We conducted multiple phases of research to better understand consumer attitudes towards in-person research. And our team is ready to share that information with you as you design your project. When recruitment begins, safety screening to minimize the possibility of inviting a COVID-infected participant will happen with every recruit. We then leverage our proprietary FMP technology to enable private, secure correspondence between you and the participant. Consent forms, homework assignments, and other pre-study exercises are all done electronically, securely maintained on our networks at our client portal. We'll be happy to demo that for you to see all you can do with this technology. On site, no stone remains unturned to reduce the chance of infection. Before you arrive, our facility is regularly fogged with antimicrobial systems to deliver six log kill or elimination of 99.999% of all viral material on all surfaces. The day of your study, Beyond the additional hand sanitation steps taken, all individuals are temperature checked prior to entry and are assigned seating in measured, socially distanced areas. Doors are now hands-free, and facility rooms include sneeze guards that don't interfere with audio-video recording equipment. And signage is placed throughout to remind all visitors that touching surfaces is one of the fastest ways to spread the virus. And we're proud to announce that we are the only facility network that has eliminated the handling of incentives. Funds are now transferred into participants' l and &E online accounts, making all transactions secure while also hands-free. For your viewing experience, some changes have been made as well to ensure greater safety and comfort. Sneeze guards have been placed in viewing areas, and new procedures have been developed to minimize handling. And we also stocked up on PPE, masks, hand sanitizer, gloves, all included as part of your visit. And we're hopeful that now more than ever, the usage of streaming will become a good replacement for in-person attendees to reduce clients on site. We are encouraging clients to stay at home by offering our l &E streaming solution at a discounted rate. And we have a host of technologies through our partnerships, which you can learn more about at our website that can help clients collaborate, analyze, and improve the overall quality of their research. From start to finish, l &E Research has engineered the safest facility experience possible please visit our website at www.leresearch.com for a complete list of steps we are taking to provide a hands-free, COVID-safe visit and information on our pandemic participant research. We thank you for being a client of LE Research, and we look forward to getting back to work with you, connecting you and your clients to our community and delivering great research. From all of us at LE Research, stay safe and see you soon. 
Well, it looks like we were having a little bit of challenges there with that video uh, in terms of some of the content, although you can find that at our website uh, or on our YouTube channel. That'd be leresearch.com to give you a greater sense of the overall steps. Um, next videos we want to show you, however, um, would be actual in, in facility research experience uh, using the CCAM focus technology. So our first one here that we're going to take a look at is actually from our, as you can see, our Columbus location. Uh, we utilize the CCAM camera to give you both panoramic and then in-person view. Uh, this facility view would be what socially distanced looked like. So let's roll that video and see if we can take a look at that. We prepared, uh, keeping our staff, our clients, and our respondents safe here at Columbus. I felt comfortable coming right into work, uh, firstly because the conversation began immediately. Um, we were all talking about what was going on, and then ideas already started flowing, and then when actual practices were put into place, then I felt very comfortable to come in and follow those practices. We have, like Melvin suggested, we have had safe practices prior to this pandemic. So we've always been very attentive, attentive to services and having gloves and food handling and very, very um, precise about it. So just the way LME has handled everything from the jump, just the way that all of their safety precautions from the very beginning made it just that much safer for me to come back and also for our respondents like when a respondent comes in and they see all of these things that we've done it makes them that more you know comfortable to come to a study you know to actually be here and i think that's important how that we're progressing um to like through this together and like carol mentioned you know this may be the first time that a person has come outside and so to see that we are one of the few companies to do these uh, safety procedures makes it that much. All right, well then from that video, we could obviously see what a socially distanced facility looked like. Uh, special thanks to my client service uh, team there in Columbus that uh, double today as actors in addition to. Um, here in our next video slide in some of the imagery we're gonna take a look at uh, would be the vantage point of utilizing plexiglass or what we call sneeze guard uh, separators. Uh, enabling you to be in a smaller room environment, uh, similar to the table experience that you've all seen before. Uh, but I think this video does a great job of giving you an idea of um, the plexiglass look uh, and how unobtrusive it is while still enabling, obviously, participants to engage in research when we consider to be more conference room style tables. So let's take a roll and take a look at that. All right, so um, welcome to, uh, to today's focus group. Uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through um, and we'd like to get a little bit of feedback from you guys um, on a couple topics regarding the COVID-19, um, specifically kind of re-entry uh, back into the new normal, uh, if you will. Um, it's fine, you know, the world is a very different place right now from how it was several months ago. So we did not get to ski in any resort as we were out there, but uh, we did some backcountry skiing and, and some free skiing, so yeah. that was fine. And then we just were uncertain on the way home what everything was going to look like. And for uh, for you, what what stands out the most in the new normal? Um, that we're just trying to make everyone else feel better. All right, so there we get a good look. Uh, got to not only to identify the video quality, but also the audio quality. Rebecca, I'll turn it back over to you. We'll start talking more about the CCAM technology, but um, there would be a great example of what that would look like in an facility experience. Thanks so much, Brett. Um, so there are some additional advantages of the CCAM technology that can work in our social distancing environment. First of all, both the moderator and participants are able to rejoin remotely if you need to do things differently. Uh, we've been in an environment where in a facility you would have the people in a room and you would have a group of clients in a back room who would be observing the group as it took place live. It, with CCAM, it's no longer necessary for those clients to have to travel to observe the group. They can individually be in their own homes or locations of choice and are able to join remotely and see the entire group as it takes place. In addition, as the group is proceeding, they're also able to enter comments and chat into the chat box in the screen and 
gives them an opportunity to convey messaging to the moderator that they may want to have uh, communicated in the group. Here what you see is a flexible solution where we can include both a moderator who is remote, uh, participants who are even remote, and stitch those all together as if everybody is in the same room. Um, this technology is great for eliminating last-minute no-shows and cancellations from interfering with the ability for the focus group to proceed. So basically, just to recap, your moderator doesn't have to be there, can be, but doesn't have to be, can actually run the group remotely. And all of your observers can be in a remote location and easily see what's taking place in the group and have input into the content as it proceeds. Also, the CCAM Focus Kit is portable. So as you can see here from this image, everything fits inside a small case, which is weighs less than five pounds. You can take it with you to a place if you need to set it up to do a sort of different kind of group. So if you have to go from one facility to the other, or you need to have some people in a location that's not in the facility while the rest of the people are in the facility, the person can just grab a kit, get in the car, drive it to wherever it needs to be, set it up in a matter of a few moments, and it's, it's operable with the focus group that you are currently running. Also, um, CCAM, as I mentioned earlier, is a technology that's available globally. So if you need to do research that is in another country, uh, you are not confined as a facility to only the location where you have a physical space. You can partner with one of your international facility groups and you can run groups through your own facility with this partner and broadcast them as part of the same project. So you're not confined to only what's available in a location in the United States, but you can actually have your groups run some in the United States, some internationally, or all internationally. In this case, we're showing an example of a typical group in the country of Japan where CCAM is located. So basically, it's going to be a while before we are going to be able to return to traditional location-based focus groups, if ever. And it's necessary to examine options that make a return to live focus groups possible so that we can continue in-person research. Here you see an example of people wearing masks. That's typical of what we're going to see today, as well as the plexiglass barriers. So thank you, everyone. We've finished sharing with you the value and impact of CCAM inside in-person facilities. What we thought we would do next is share with you and answer a few questions that are typically asked of us when we talk about using CCAM inside facilities amidst the social distancing protocols. So let's get started with this. I'm going to ask Irene Volka to moderate our question and answer session. Irene, let me turn this over to you. Thank you, Rebecca. So for our first question, if anyone gets COVID from being at a session in a facility, Brett, who is responsible for it? Is it the facility or the client? Thanks, Irene. It's an interesting question. Um, I think the first way to answer that is, first of all, for everyone interested, is understanding why liability and waivers. Um, first of all, we require that everyone who enters our facilities sign a liability waiver. That is for uh, everyone's safety. The law is clearly a, a little unfamiliar right now, uh, but uh, the good news is, is that we have as we've gotten back to in-person research, have seen uh, no uh, unwillingness by participants to sign waivers. So they're clearly aware that uh, while uh, COVID is a risk, um, there's a lot of risks in life. So they are happily uh, willing to take that risk. Um, and I think as it relates to clients, um, you know, lawsuits are obviously something that can't be avoided. Um, people do that every day in a host of different varieties. But liability waivers are one way that we try to protect that to ensure that clients are not liable to that. We certainly see that as our responsibility, and hence why, again, that we uh, ask everybody to sign those liability waivers to ensure that uh, we all feel comfortable getting back into the in-person research process. Thanks, Brett. Now, regarding downloaded recordings, so I'm assuming this would be for CCAM, can respondent faces be blurred? 
Yes, absolutely. Um, a number of our clients are starting to ask for this kind of service, uh, particularly in the midst of GDPR and protection of personally identifiable information. Healthcare-related studies require this often. Um, certainly, faces can be blurred. So when you send your recordings and your streaming media files along to your clients or need to show them in a situation where you're reviewing content, yes, faces can be blurred. We can also mask the audio portion of any kind of a recording. So that eliminates two personally identifiable pieces of information. Uh, so you just need to ask for that service and then you can receive it. Thanks, Rebecca. Another question for you, Brett. What kind of impact does COVID have on in-person recruitment? Also, do people hesitate coming in uh, to the facilities? Great question. So um, fortunately, um, as we've been communicating with clients, uh, we also were wondering what the impacts would be. So l &E conducted its own study with over 11,000 of its panels. We actually, uh, panelists, we did this in a two-phase study approach. One was just to get a general sense of what the current uh, attitude was uh, as it related to in-person research. That is, how did participants, uh, consumers feel about coming back into facilities and participating in research? We then did a follow-on phase two uh, post where we created and produced videos that showed what the new normal in-person facility experience would be like from the um, changing of the facilities, the using of sneeze guards, uh, trying to make a hands-free environment, as well to utilizing uh, our technologies as it relates to recruitment and connection with participants uh, pre-study. So when you look at um, example like liability waiver forms or consents, um, um, rescreening, uh, things that we were able, our technology enables to do um, without um, the traditional method of signing forms and handing pieces of paper back and forth. So we basically wanted to give participants an overall experience of like what this would look like so they could see the entire show. Um, happy to report that um, over 80% of participants that we surveyed, again, um, which we're happy to share that. In fact, we do share that data and uh, clients can find that information at our website uh, under COVID-19 updates, which includes this research. Basically, the long and short of it was, Irene, that participants came back over 80% said that they would be very likely to participate in in-person research based on the video that they'd witnessed and what an uh, in-person facility experience would look like. And another 12%, uh, so totally 94% of people uh, said that they would be somewhat likely or very likely. And so far, I'm happy to report that studies that we have been conducting uh, post-COVID as the facilities of all our locations now are back open, uh, we are seeing almost exactly the same show rates, uh, about 93% show rates at this time. So people are engaging. They are happy to do it. And based on safety uh, procedures that we have taken, uh, we are not seeing any impact to either uh, timelines or uh, length of um, or issues as far as recruitment concern. Only things I would certainly urge clients to consider is is just based on populations. Uh, as we certainly, as we dive uh, dive into the data a little deeper, we certainly can see uh, certain populations that may not be uh, or might require a little bit additional planning or consideration, such as uh, folks that are maybe uh, perhaps more um, predisposed to issue with COVID. Thanks, Brett. That definitely helpful. All right, so our next question is, could CCAM Focus be used for product testing? Thanks, Irene. You know, I'm going to ask you to answer this question and your role as the business director for the CCAM Focus service. Um, you're much closer to this and see this often um, in studies that you are involved in facilitating. That's very true. Thanks, Rebecca. So we actually have had a great success um, post-COVID with product testing. In fact, that was actually our first round of projects. Um, with the CCAM Focus solution um, being on the table, that means that we actually capture anything and everything that's happening. Um, so you can have respondents um, open up packages, you know, try out different products, and all of that is being captured, as well as, of course, their uh, their facial reactions um, as they go about the actual activity. Um, we've also done some taste testing. Um, we're in, you know, you can see people um, try out 
the uh, product, um, taste it, and actually feel the texture, see their facial reactions as they go about the, the certain actions that they were asked to do. Um, and so far, it's been um, very positive. We've had a lot of clients specifically in the pharma division um, coming back and doing more activities. So we have a lot of uh, new product testing and food testing um, projects coming up in the next couple of weeks because of that. All right, so for our last question, and I, I guess I'll throw it to both of you, um, are you guys seeing a greater shift from in-person to online research? And I guess, Brett, given that you are in the in-person business, why don't we start off with you? Yeah, this is a question that I, quite frankly, get a lot. Uh, it's um, interesting now. I'm now coming on to year 27 uh, in the market research and insights industry space. Um, and this question is, is one that uh, makes, me, makes me chuckle a little bit as uh, it reminds me that over my 27 years that I have been uh, hearing about the prediction and death of focus groups ever since. So uh, if it's not COVID, it was um, online technologies or uh, people's unwillingness to travel, uh, I've heard the gamut as far as uh, why people think that in-person research is uh, going to begin to fade away and is going to shift to more online research. And I tell people there's five really good reasons as to why that's not going to happen. Um, first off, um, you know, online research is, in a while it's a valuable tool, uh, certainly has challenges that relates to IP protection. So if there's a product that's there, um, I know that online companies uh, indicate that they can, you know, prevent recordings and such, but nothing can prevent from, for example, uh, me picking up my phone and recording a, a computer screen. So uh, companies that have uh, stringent IP protection requirements or concerns about that getting out into the public domain, uh, there's a reason why in-person research they do that is that there's an ability to control that environment. Uh, certainly another one, as in so many mature industries, government regulation, uh, particularly in pharma, there are uh, numerous types of studies and FDA requirements that look at the requirement that they demand that uh, the research be done in person and that online um, is not, uh, is, is not uh, permissible. So <clears throat> while that's not for all pharma studies, there are certainly certain types that prevent that. You also now have the issue of the fact that, um, you know, while studies vary, we still look at roughly three in 10 uh, citizens uh, in the United States, uh, just focusing here in the U.S., uh, three in 10 uh, citizens do not have broadband internet. Um, you also then couple that with what percentage may have a smartphone. Uh, when you add up all those things, and I won't even delve too deeply into technology challenges um, from our own UX, UX research, I can assure you that there's plenty of people that we have found that had a computer with a microphone and a video camera, but didn't mean that they actually knew how to use it very well. Uh, but it still doesn't change the fact that uh, there's still a very large segment of society that does not have the technology uh, to uh, capable to enable them to do online research. Um, <clears throat> fourth, I would also point out is um, <clears throat> while video has enabled us to uh, touch into a couple of our senses, uh, certainly three of the five remaining, um, taste, touch, and smell specifically, uh, are not able to be conveyed over a cross computer screen. So um, the, um, until technology is able to solve that one, um, I think that we're going to continue, of course, to see in-person research. But I think the, also the greater question, which is what leads me into my fifth um, item, <clears throat> which is really to point out that online research and in-person research are tremendously complementary to each other. And we're now seeing more clients actually enable and utilize both uh, solutions to get a broader view. Uh, specifically, um, <clears throat> the value of in-person research, um, which is obviously dates back to the origins of focus groups over 70 years ago now, uh, is that we still make decisions as human beings in a society. Uh, human behavior is still influenced by other human behavior. So having a, a group of people together to discuss issues uh, is how we operate in a normative society, whether it's our family or friends. Uh, we all subconsciously are influenced. Uh, and so being able to witness and see that reaction uh, is still why critical that I think that's a, a valuable component to the process. Um, but the good news is, is that as clients realize the value of both tools more, uh, audio or video and online um, provi provides a tremendous uh, wealth of information. 
uh, and that can also be used greatly to shape the in-person research. So when you get together, uh, you really can study more on those issues as opposed to in the past where obviously all those moderators out there that are listening know um, as they're trying to manage client expectations that you have an hour and a half or two hours of time. Um, let's see what questions we can answer <laughs> without uh, knowing that that's a, at that time it escapes very quickly. Uh, what can enable us to focus uh, more rapidly on things that are within that limited narrow of time that can uh, actually have the greatest impact for get, answering our clients' questions. And hence, that's where I think online research has been a tremendous complement to the in-person process and why I think both will continue moving forward successfully. To add to that, CCAM is a technology that allows you to combine both the in-facility portion and the remote portion into one actual project. By enabling some respondents and even the moderator to be remote, as well as clients, while a focus group actually is taking place live in the facility. So you can combine both technologies using CCAM. In addition, the bottom line is what people are looking for is quality. When they engage with a the service, they expect to receive a result that is going to deliver to them the quality of research they need to deliver to their clients. And that's where CCAM and Civicom have come into achieving a success in this industry. Civicom is the global leader in telephone and web-enabled in-depth interviews and focus groups. We conduct over 35,000 of these a year globally in multiple languages and in almost every country. We've achieved this success by delivering the kind of quality that our clients are looking for over time. We're happy to work with facilities on CCAM, our latest entry into the marketing research market. We thank you for your time today. We appreciate your being here. And we are open to receiving any kinds of comments and suggestions or inquiries that you have. Both Brett and I look forward to hearing from you. Well said, Rebecca. I, too, appreciate the time and opportunity today and look forward to hearing other people's questions and comments.